Hi, I'm Jason, the founder here at Commusoft. And I'm Jack, sales manager here at Commusoft. Welcome to the second episode in our series, Success in the Field. Today we're going to be talking about communication. Communication with your customers and how it impacts the customer journey. I think it's pretty interesting how we've seen over quite a long time, like the different ways businesses communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once upon a time when I started Commusoft right at the beginning, everything was letter. Like no one was thinking about email. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing so much more email, right? No one is thinking, can I send this letter? They're sending, they're saying, yeah, let's send this by email if we can. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to be really interesting over the next few years is, is that going to evolve even further? Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that um, you know, businesses now are sending an awful lot of email, whether it's as simple as confirmations and reminders, you know, invoices. Um, and I think I'm starting to see a little bit more uh, other forms of communication. Mm. Um, I know SMS is a huge one. We, Commusoft, send like 50,000 text messages, 100,000 text messages a month mm. from our platform. Um, and they're in a variety of different ways, you know, from sort of standardized messaging, you know, uh, service reminders and, and uh, confirmations and we're on our way messages mm. um, and I'm seeing more and more companies actually adopt a more personalized SMS experience where they might s actually write out a message and send it to a customer. Mm. So like talking about automation, mm. how do you feel about these type, these kind of boilerplate messages that people send? Mm. You know, dear name goes here, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the message is. Do you think that people have become numb to that type of sort of general, semi-personalized content? I think to a degree, possibly yes. Um, I think you can make them look really formal when they're quite customized. Uh, you can do things like bullet point and then the date, bullet point and then the time, bullet point and then the engineer's name. So it can make it look really formal and really neat. Um, and I think some can look a little bit more like, oh, there's another automated email. Kind so of we're thing. thinking that they're more, the value in them really now comes from, you know, these, these sort of more official, you know, communications in terms of like communication, uh, communicating a confirmation or a yeah. reminder, or this is your invoice, mm -hmm. rather than a more personalized experience around maybe marketing, where you're trying mm -hmm. to persuade or you're trying to engage someone in learning something. Yeah, I think they're two different scenarios, right? Mm. I think for the for a formal confirmation, like you're paying someone for some services, you're going to expect, and it's good for the companies to look professional as well. Yeah, you know, it's their the way they come across to their customers is really important. And by using tags and you know auto filling out email templates and all of this, it makes it look like they're a lot more professional as a company. But I then think I think you're right in terms of like marketing and sales, it's probably more more important to put and make them look like they're a bit more fun and a bit more... Yeah, so maybe if you're in the quoting stage mm -hmm. and you're trying to win a quote, you're mm -hmm. trying to work with someone to try and obviously win that installation of some description, mm -hmm. having these standardized templates can then come across uh, like unpersonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to a degree. And then as that quote goes through the process, it gets accepted and then it's the, the more formal professional you know, confirmations and reminders and the on the way messages as well. But I think, you know, we, we spoke earlier about how the, the, the communications aren't just those three, you know, the, the ones everyone imagines, the communication, the, sorry, the, uh, the confirmations, the confirmations, the reminder that goes out the night before and then the on the way message. Mm. I think there's a lot more around the communication that can be worked on. The whole journey, mm. effectively. Yeah, mm. I think it's so true because when you think about uh, how a business uh, interacts with their customers, there often is a lot of gaps in customer journeys mm. for companies that they don't even realize. Mm. Uh, I had an amazing experience recently where um, I had received the beginnings of the communication really well and then it sort of went dead. I didn't hear anything back from them. And I think that those gaps are only ever uh, identified when you walk in, you know, walk in the shoes of your customer like we've talked about before. Mm. And I think you know, businesses need to be a bit more switched on and really think about the content of those messages. Mm. Again, if you speak to our client operations team, they'll tell you over and over again that so many businesses sort of write the bare minimum, mm. don't really think about it, mm. and therefore the, the impact of that communication is lost. Mm. You know, if you're sending a service reminder, why are you not saying the benefits? Why yeah. are you not trying to sell it? Why yeah. are you not saying, look, you're 
boiler in this case maybe is due for a service it's important for these reasons it's important for you to take action mm. and therefore you know what is the action you're asking for yeah. you know do you want them to email you back do you want them to call you do you want them to you know schedule it in another way mm. and i think being very clear and concise in your messaging is going to be vital to having a well executed customer journey that at the end of the day breeds a better customer experience yeah and i think it helps them eventually win the service at the end of the day Completely. if we take that as an example rather than getting maybe two or three reminders of just like hey Mr. Majara, your service is due in two weeks' time, give us a call. It's actually, hey, Mr. Majara, we came last year and serviced your boiler. Yep. Really important to keep these up to date as the warranties expire and all of this. So I think it, it helps set them apart as a company that knows what they're talking about. So obviously we've spoken about text messages and, and emails and letters and everything. What do you think communication is gonna look like moving forward now into the future? I think we're gonna see a a bigger variety of types of communication. You know, we're seeing, we saw letters. Mm -hmm. I think they will always have a place. We're gonna see, obviously email is not gonna go any, anywhere anytime soon. SMS, again, I think is still very valid. Uh, I think we're gonna see much more social platforms. Mm. So chatbots on the website, we've had huge success with Drift yeah. on our website. I think our clients and field service companies as a whole are gonna have to start looking at that type of technology and adopting it. Mm. It's a great way to get instant response from your customers, especially if they don't want to call you. And if it's out of hours and you can automate, as we've talked about, some of the, uh, the, the process there. Mm. But I think things like WhatsApp is going to be a huge avenue for communication. Uh, I know it's very experimental now where WhatsApp is uh, doing some sort of business API and some sort of business uh, sort of account. Um, but I think that's going to be a in, really interesting avenue going forward. And I've seen uh, on Facebook some discussion around, um, you know, using WhatsApp, especially for domestic customers, mm. to engage with them and say, look, you know, we've had this service booked. You know, you haven't communicated back about it. Can I confirm this? Or mm. can you send me some photos of X, Y, and Z? You know, if I've got those photos, it's going to be a lot easier for me to diagnose or to quote mm. remotely, you know, especially for smaller works. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, there was a great, com a great story on, what's, uh, on Facebook about a guy who had sent the email for an invoice, hadn't got a response, sent it then by WhatsApp and got an immediate response. Do you think just because of the, the ability to be so immediate with their response? I think, two, I think there's two things. Yeah. We as people are either really good or really bad at managing our inboxes. Mm -hmm. You know, mine is like clean as hell. I just cannot deal with a ton of spam, it would just overwhelm me. Mm. But I've seen other people's where you go to their inbox and there's like 50,000 unread emails. Yeah. And I think the problem Crazy. is, you don't know what your customer is, what, who they are. Mm. And you know, if they're one of these people with 50,000 unread emails, you're just another email in that inbox. Mm. Mm. So having another way to communicate, you know, maybe not by default, because you're not gonna know that, mm. but especially if you haven't heard back, thinking about, hey, we could communicate via SMS or we could yeah. communicate via WhatsApp mm. is going to be really, really powerful to getting a much more uh, direct response. Yeah. I think the other thing is the way we treat email and the way we treat WhatsApp are very, very different. You know, we treat email as a send and forget. Mm. I've sent this off. I've forgotten about it. You'll come back to me when you're ready. Whereas for me, WhatsApp is much more engaging mm. it's something where i'm expecting a response i'm expecting an almost immediate response and i'm expecting to have a conversation mm -hmm. so i can definitely foresee in the future far more jobs being booked via whatsapp far mm. more communication happening via whatsapp um, and it will be a great way for businesses to interact with their customers especially domestic customers but even commercial ones yeah you know we talk about commercial customers but at the end of the day there's just people behind them mm. you know i've got a great friend who's a property uh, manager he actively uses WhatsApp all the time, talking to contractors. Yeah. And I think that's something that we're gonna see going forward. Yeah. So over the last 10 years or so here at Comisoft, I think we've realized the importance of communication, not just before sale and, and getting the sale, but also after the sales. Um, how do you think that can relate into the field service industry? Yeah, I think, good question. I think when you look at the vast majority of people, in my experience, you know, the, the, the sort of journey almost ends at the install being finished, mm. you know, and yeah, they might do service work afterwards, but predominantly in terms of that job, that install, you do the job, you send the final invoice, 
if you're really good, you're sending, how do we do? Give us some feedback. But that's usually it. You've been paid. Thank you very much. I think there's a real opportunity for businesses out there to, to sort of harness the fact that person or that company has trusted you. They've spent usually a lot of money on some sort of installation and therefore use that as a way to continue the conversation and continue communication. Uh, you know, for example, uh, I had a new boiler two years ago. It was a new flat, so I had no control over what boiler it was. I wasn't there. But I have no idea how to use it. And I think even, you know, if, you've, if your engineers are really good, and they, hopefully they are, they're sort of educating or giving that customer a bit of a, you know, walkthrough of the system, whatever it might be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a boiler, fire system, uh, HVAC system. Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing is, there's definitely an opportunity to send, hey, look, this is the manual. And, you know, this is how you repressurize the boiler, or this is how you reset the alarm, or, you know, this is other content that you're going to find valuable. Mm -hmm. That is showing value add yeah. to the end customer. It's going to provide a, an, a, an extended customer journey and ultimately lead to a better customer experience. Mm. And I think, you know, when we, uh, when we look forward at how businesses can improve and focusing on the customer journey and focusing now on communication today, I think it's going to be vital for businesses to actually walk in their customer shoes, understand what those customers are experiencing and try and refine and improve their communication so that at the end of the day, you know, they're more successful. So today we've discussed the importance of personalising communications to your customers. We've spoken about the communication moving forwards and how it could end up moving into things like WhatsApp uh, to make communication more instant between you and your customers. And finally we've discussed the importance of getting into your customer shoes and experiencing your customer journey from their end. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode uh, all around communication in our Success in the Field series. Uh, in the future, we're going to be going out there, talking to external companies, picking their brains and talking to our internal team here at Comusoft to provide amazing information, amazing tips on how you can improve your customer journeys. As always, if there's any comments, leave them below and we look forward to seeing you next time.